So in the last video, we covered a lot of the color tab and the tools you have available to you inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you watch that, you'll know that the rest of these two tabs are pretty much kind of a downhill road. It's very easy. They don't have as many tools nor as many tabs, but that doesn't mean they don't have incredible control and it doesn't mean that you can't do some incredible stuff with them. So let's go ahead and dig right into the audio tab. I went ahead since the last video and I just redid the uh, actual timeline. I wanted something that actually I could actually export and show you guys what you can do in DaVinci Resolve. So uh, yeah, this is a kind of reworked timeline with some new color and I really like it. So all I need to do now is jump over to the audio and let's do some adjustments. So of course you'll see I clicked on the Fairlight Audio tab down here at the bottom, almost center, center right, I guess technically. But you're gonna see you have basically an editing timeline, but it's mainly focused on the audio that was associated with the clips and the audio you've actually imported into your timeline. So like we have over the last couple of videos, I wanna show you guys the tabs. Most of them you're going to recognize. You have your media pool, where you can actually still drag elements out. You have your effects library. Now, you're not gonna have very many, in fact, you're gonna have no effects currently. Um, the effects library is mainly for VST plugins. So items that you can actually add to DaVinci Resolve if you wanted to use maybe some waves compressors or um, any other VSTs that you might use that could really help you facilitate your audio workflow. You know, if you like some certain types of compressors, some certain types of EQs, you can actually use the VSTs and import them into DaVinci Resolve. So there's your effects library. Of course, I have nothing currently installed, but let's move on. So next you have your index, which is basically all of the audio clips you are currently using. For instance, um, I can actually remove, you'll see I have kind of my clusters here. I have audio one, where we can actually remove all of the tracks on audio one. I can remove all of audio two. And this won't remove the actual audio from your render. This is more so just to hide it from your view if you have a lot of audio tracks. So if you were to have maybe like 20 audio tracks and you needed to just focus on a couple and actually mix them down and uh, really make sure the levels are correct, then you could just isolate just those two particular tracks and then work on them accordingly. But again, we only have three audio tracks, so there's really no use for me to use the index tab. Um, you, of course, can also see your markers. Again, I have a short timeline. I didn't need to add any markers, so I'm going to go ahead and close my index pad or my index tab. Next, we have our mixer. Now, similar to the mixer in the edit window, you have all of your volume output, you have your effects if you wanna add any, you have your EQ, your dynamics for, um, this is your compressor, you have panning, and of course you can solo particular tracks, mute particular tracks, and yeah, so pretty much there's your mixer. Then you have your meters tab, and your meters, of course, you'll see the active audio tracks that we currently have. Um, of course, I have nothing on audio three, so that is completely empty. But if I were to do a playback, you would go ahead and hear, you'll, you'll see all of the audio moving, so. There you go. So you can actually see the audio spectrum moving. And like I said, audio one, I just made a quick timeline. I didn't actually remove the audio from those clips, even though they actually have no audio. So uh, those are just kind of sitting there, no need to really touch them. Now you'll also notice in the meters um, kind of tab, you have your preview window. So that way you can see where you are in the timeline with your audio. So if you need a visual reference, you have it up here in the meters tab. Next, you have the inspector for when you select a particular clip, very similar to the inspector that you have inside of your edit window. You still have your equalizer, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it will actually override the EQ here, but I'm pretty sure they're one and the same. So if you were to add an EQ here, it would probably adjust it inside of your EQ in the same track as well. So audio two, it would adjust it right here. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave that off because it's simply music that has already been mixed down and mastered. So I have no reason to actually EQ this sound. And then of course you have metadata, which is pretty much all of the details of the audio 
waveform that you're currently looking at. You can see the bit depth, of course. So there are all of your tabs. And like I said, here is where you can actually dig in. So let's pretend we were trying to go ahead and adjust audio 2 and let's pretend it's actually vocals. So you could go in here on audio 2, we could isolate it, which is the S for solo and then M is for mute. So we could isolate it with the S and then I could play it back. And then I hear, and we'll, again, pretending it's vocals, um, I hear that I want to adjust the EQ just a little bit. So I could go ahead, I could add some ramps. We could go ahead and add a band so that way you're cutting out all of the low frequencies. And just kind of a quick tip, um, whenever it comes to audio, unless you really have a reason for it, it would probably be best for most of you on vocals to cut out frequencies probably I'd recommend 40 and below, but on the safe side, probably 60 hertz and below. And then of course you can cut out the highs as well and add your sixth band as well. You can play with these. All of them do different items. For instance, if you were to go here, you'll see that I can actually adjust it and it creates that arc that you see here. Or if I were to adjust it to this guy, you'll see, of course, it doesn't actually have an arc back down until it gets to band six. And if I removed it, it just stays all straight all the way across. So. Again, play with the different shapes, and again, this is your audio spectrum. So if you understand how to work with audio, you understand how to mix down and uh, pull frequencies to make room for other frequencies, you'll feel right at home. The equalizer is really good that I've found in DaVinci Resolve. In fact, I haven't found the need to import any additional EQs um, via VST plugins into DaVinci Resolve, which I've been, I was really excited about. I was actually extremely proud of DaVinci for uh, doing so well with their actual EQs and even their compressors. So I could close this out. Let's say we want to leave the EQ as is. Um, I'm going to revert it though. I don't like, I don't want to tweak the music at all. And then I could go into the EQ and then you simply double click. And I should have said that double click on the EQ to open it up. You can double click on the dynamics. And again, you can activate your compressor. You can activate gates. Now what gates will do, <clears throat> excuse me, is they will allow certain sounds out after they reach a certain decibel level. So for instance, if you wanted to have a gate and you wanted to have it be negative 50 decibels where anything that is quieter than ne negative 50 decibels will actually be cut out from the audio, but anything above 50 decibels will be heard. So if you have any noise, um, kind of ominous humming noises in the back, you can use gate to cut that out. But again, that's really difficult to do unless you actually have, if it's like a known frequency, because typically most noises span kind of the full spectrum where you'll hear an actual humming and you'll hear kind of the white hissing of the white noise. So it's really hard to fully cut out, but just know that the gate can actually help. Now, of course, you have your compressor, which does pretty much the exact opposite of your gate in that it tries to bring more of the quiet sounds out without cranking up the really loud tones as well. So if you have audio and uh, you're trying to maybe hear more of that ominous hum because maybe you're making a horror film or something like that. And yes, I said horror films, but... Uh, <clears throat> you would be able to use the compressor to bring out some of the more quieter tones that might be in the background that you'd really like to bring out. And uh, maybe if you need to go ahead and match some particular audio levels, you can do that as well. And of course you have a limiter as well, which is basically just that. It limits how much audio can come out. So as you can see, we have a limiter set to currently negative 20 decibels. And basically anything that goes above 20 decibels is going to be shut down it's going to stop it it's probably going to have a very distorted sound because the the lower the actual range you give your limiter of course the worse it is going to sound because it basically it will hit that particular sound and since that sound has nowhere else to go it kind of spreads it out and muffles it and mixes it in with one another it's funny but it definitely happens so there's your limiter we can go ahead and close out of that tab next you have your pan and again this would be if you wanted to control where you wanted the sound to come from you have your left right front back and you can of course adjust everything like for instance now i can drag this down i can have it in the left back 
But currently, since this is just a regular audio track, we're gonna leave it at the front and we're gonna have the full spread and we're gonna reset that because it is just audio, or excuse me, just music. But yeah, so that is pretty much the audio tab in a nutshell, really simple. And like I told you guys, if you, if you understand or if you've ever worked inside of a digital audio workstation before, such as Ableton, Logic, Reason, any of that, you're gonna feel really at home here in DaVinci Resolve because they basically made their own kind of built-in window that is just strictly dedicated to audio. Now, of course, it does have its limitations unlike your actual digital audio workstations, but you can push it pretty darn far, especially if you import your own VST plugins. So that is pretty much it for the audio tab. In the next video, we're gonna finally dive in and we're gonna render our entire project. Pretty easy to do, and we're not gonna go over actually what every single codec means, but I wanna show you how you can export and you can at least know that you're gonna be able to watch your video in high definition. So. Without further ado, you should probably go ahead and click on that next video right about now? Maybe now. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like and I would appreciate it if you guys would subscribe. And thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. Seriously, this means a lot. Thank you for sticking with me on this. And until next time, you guys, be sure and have a good one. And I, of course, will see you in the next video.